If you're going to enlarge different size negatives, you're going to need different size lenses. Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -hmm. I sound better in my head. A common question for beginners is what focal length lens do I need to enlarge the negative that I'm shooting? There really isn't a maximum, but there is a minimum. So we're going to look at a variety of different focal length lenses at different size negatives to see what covers and what doesn't. The maximum usually is limited by how high you can make your enlarger go. The minimum is, is it projecting all the way to the corners of the negative? If it isn't, maybe a little too short. Now brand is really irrelevant to this question. All of the, of the three major brands, that'd be Schneider, Rodenstock, or Nikkor, are going to make a variety of focal lengths and they all cover very well. You just have to make sure you get the focal length appropriate to what you're shooting. Here's a 50 millimeter lens with 35 millimeter film on a small hobby sized enlarger. This produces at almost maximum height an eight by 10 inch print. Switching to a 40 millimeter wide angle lens, specifically the 40 millimeter wide angle Componon by Schneider, I can move the head up to its maximum, but now achieve an 11 by 14 inch print. This demonstrates how changing to a shorter focal length will provide a larger print at almost the same settings. Here I have the 50 millimeter lens now on my eight by 10 enlarger with 35 millimeter film, producing the same eight by 10 inch print uh, squeezes everything down to its almost smallest possible settings. So this is a limit of the enlarger. Here's the same enlarger, same size film, but now switching to a 100 millimeter lens and it produces approximately a four by six inch print. Here's the 100 millimeter lens with six by six film. This is producing a 16 by 16 inch print. You can see that the head is now much higher. And to show how coverage is limited by a short focal length, here's the 50 millimeter lens with the six by six film. Also at a 16 inch print size, you can see that the head is now much lower, but the corners are completely cut off. So it is not providing enough illumination. Here is six by nine film, again with the 100 millimeter lens. This is producing a 16 by 20 inch print. Because of the longer film, the head is actually lower with the same lens than with the six by six film. The same 100 millimeter lens now with six by 12 sized film. The head is a little bit higher. This is producing approximately a 16 by 24 inch print. It still covers at 100 millimeters. If we look at a 100 millimeter lens on six by 17 film, you will see the corners are significantly darker. It does not have enough illumination for the corners and they're actually cut off. Changing now to the 135 millimeter lens with the same 16 by 17 frame, we are now getting complete coverage and even illumination. Any apparent fall off in this image is actually from the fact that the safe light is kind of uh, reflecting off the board. Here we have the 135 millimeter with four x five film at approximately a 16 by 20 inch print size. And we get complete coverage and the head is about the same location as with all the previous prints we've made. If we switch to the 150 millimeter lens, we get the same coverage of illumination, but now you'll see that the head is higher up to produce the same 16 by 20 inch print. And here, finally, you can see eight by 10 film at a 16 by 20 inch print with the 300 millimeter lens. And you'll see that the head is now so high, it's not even in the frame of the video camera. A 240 millimeter lens would have the head lower and a 360 would have it higher. 
So there you have it. If you're going to use a 35 millimeter negative, then 40, 50, or 60 millimeter lens will work just fine. You can even stretch all the way up to an 80 and still get pretty good results, but your head is going to be much, much higher. So make sure it's an enlarger that you can use. If you have a very small enlarger, then you may choose a 50 millimeter, or if you need a bigger enlargement from that small enlarger, a 40 millimeter wide angle design will work fine too. Medium format, well, there it gets a little tricky. Medium format covers a range of different shapes. 645 and 6x6 work very well with a 75 or 80 millimeter lens. Longer, of course, will work fine, but no shorter than that. If you're going to shoot 6x7, then you really need no less than a 90 millimeter. 100 will work even better. And for 6x9, 90 millimeter probably won't cover, so go for 100 millimeter or longer. Then you get into your weird panoramic formats, 6x12, 6x17. Really, those work best with 135 or longer. You might be able to squeeze a little shorter depending on the design of the lens, if it has a little bit larger circle of illumination. When you get into 4x5, 135 millimeter really is kind of the low end cutoff. Go a little bit longer, 150, um, we'll raise your head up a little higher, but it does tend to give a little bit sharper corners depending on which brand you get. Then you get into 5x7. 5x7, 180 might be a little on the short end. Um, most, most of them may cover. 210 definitely will. And then when you move up all the way to 8x10, 240 millimeter, 300 and 360 are really your, your baseline. Stick with 300, um, unless you're enlarger, just really can't go high enough for the size enlargement you're doing. Then a 240 will probably be your best option. Anything other than that, well, you're on your own. If you want to really make monster enlargements from monster size negatives, um, well, if you're looking at that, you're probably doing a lot of research on different lenses anyway. So uh, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you next time.